Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So a lot has happened since I posted last. I know that I owe all of my subscribers a massive apology for my constant disappearing acts. What can I really say? A lot has happened, as I said in my last video previously, in my personal life, which took a lot of time away from my channel. And I also felt as though Harry and Meghan really had gotten their just desserts, so to speak. Since I've posted and since I've been an avid follower of the Sussex, or should I say, the runaway royals, a lot of things have come tumbling down for the deceptive Montecito duo. So a lot of milk has been spilt, so to speak, that cannot be recovered. They essentially have become a laughing stock of Hollywood. They don't really have any concrete friends or allies that they can run to, and they pretty much are quite isolated out there in Santa Barbara, scrapping for and struggling for ideas in order to rebrand themselves. Harry has taken numerous, countless shots against the royal firm, which have fallen flat. William and Kate stealthily have not picked up or taken any of the bait to retaliate in any way, shape or form. King Charles is flourishing in his new role and he certainly is beginning to win over the British public. A lot has been lost in the Sussex camp and the Sussex squad, of course, are extremely furious and rooting for their dynamic duo to come back with an answer. But what can you really say? After the degradation of South Park, a lot of Prince Harry's mind-numbing attacks against the firm that we've all heard before, there's not really much left in their arsenal for them to pursue in order to bring down the so-called quote-unquote archaic firm that they are seeking yet to still destroy. Essentially, they've destroyed themselves. So there's been a lot of question marks around their Netflix rebranding, and we know, of course, their Spotify deal has pretty much tanked. The CEO of Spotify, to my knowledge, was not happy with the fact that Meghan Markle was, in fact, not even bothering to do live interviews with her guests on her podcast that she had contractually agreed to produce content for. Essentially, she slacked. It was too much work for the pampered former princess, and she simply could not be bothered to conduct her own interviews. She also tried to reach out to big name starlets like Taylor Swift, and her pleas for collabs essentially fell dead in the water because she's not popular. No one believes her plights. Everyone believes that her narrative is false. I also believe that Kelly Osborne recently took some direct shots at Meghan and essentially exposed her as the phony that we all know her to be. This leaves humiliated Meghan plotting revenge. So she's plotting to get justice against all of her critiques, all of the people who have exposed her, such as Piers Morgan, YouTube channels like myself, so on and so forth. I don't think that this is really going to serve her because we know that this quest for revenge has been going on for quite some time now, and it's really not serving the dynamic duo in any way, shape or form. So I'm going to whiz through this online source that I found, which pretty much is a little unveiling as to what Harry and Meghan are plotting to do next. Humiliated Meghan plots revenge on the haters. After a slew of embarrassing new claims, insiders say Meghan Markle and Harry are determined to come out all guns blazing in a power move orchestrated by Team Sussex and their celeb pals. Over the last three years, fans have witnessed Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's dynamic business moves come to fruition as the couple have attempted to transform themselves from pawns 
on the royal chessboard to the king and queen of Hollywood. But since the release of Harry's bombshell memoir, Spare in January, the Sussexes have been forced to grapple with a series of negative reports which continued last week when Meghan, 41, was accused by broadcaster and former politician Sir Trevor Phillips of having to learn to be black and squandering her chance to promote diversity during her time within the royal firm. It was also alleged that Meghan had written a heartfelt note to Taylor Swift to request that the hitmaker appear on her now axed podcast, Archetypes, which Taylor is said to have replied to with a short note of rejection through her team. United Talent Agency boss Jeremy Zimmer, whose clients include Harrison Ford, Priyanka Kapoor, and Wes Anderson also shot guests at a festival in Cannes when he publicly described Meghan as not a great audio talent or necessarily any kind of talent. Before adding, just because you're famous doesn't make you great at anything. And while Closer reported last week that the former Suits actress has been left distraught by the cruel comments and mockery that has been aimed at her and Harry, age 38, a source reveals that following the initial shock, she is determined to draw on whatever Hollywood kudos she has left to fight her way back to the top. The insider says, this latest slew of attacks they've had to withstand in the wake of not being deemed relevant or hardworking, it all just stings and it's genuinely humiliating to be dealing with it all in public. But the thinking on Megan's part is that they owe it to themselves to fight back and make a success of things however much that costs, and however challenging it may be in some cases. She's told the team that her new plan simply cannot fail. One option that has been put to Meghan and Harry is that they sit back for a year or so and invest their money to retain their financial security. But this isn't in Meghan's vocabulary. And instead, she feels the best revenge is to come out on top and prove the haters wrong in a spectacular style. She feels she's been backed into a corner. Her next move will be explosive, to say the least. There were further negative headlines for the couple whose friend Omid Scooby is set to release a sequel to his bombshell book about them called Finding Freedom when Buckingham Palace confirmed last week that they had officially left their UK home, Frogmore Cottage, following the news that King Charles reportedly evicted them in the wake of Harry's memoir release. Not only does the move signify that the royal family may have truly washed their hands of the Sussexes, with reports suggesting that even their royal titles could be stripped if they continue to wage war against the family. But it's also seen as a sign by royal watchers that Meghan and Harry need to rethink their personal brand. So far, the shows that have ranked in millions for them as part of their biggest Hollywood deals, including the recently axed £15 million Spotify partnership, and their £20 million Netflix contract that is also reported to be in jeopardy are the ones in which they have aired their grievances against the royals, including their December Netflix documentary and Harry's memoir. But it seems that the couple may have given way too much too soon. And as the popularity of Prince William, who was uncharacteristically snapped partying with pals in London last week, and Kate Middleton, who continues to be the family's golden girl, as Queen in Waiting continues to rise, critics have warned the couple that they risk losing even more supporters. Last week, sources at Spotify shared some of Harry's podcast ideas, which are thought to have included interviewing Russian President Vladimir Putin and ex-US President Donald Trump about their childhood traumas and talking to Pope Francis about religion all of which were publicly mocked. Meghan also sensationally signed a seemingly solo contract with top agency WME in April, who represent a host of huge stars from Robert De Niro and Michael Douglas to Ben Affleck and Jessica Alba. But so far, no projects have been formally announced. The source says that while the public humiliation feels like a war zone for the couple at the moment, they are leaning on their closest Hollywood pals advice and some support. The source adds Meghan and Harry are sticking tight with the people in their world who they feel are trustworthy, but also those who believe in their ability to bounce back. That's certainly true 
in the case of Oprah, Tyler Perry, The Blooms, Ellen and Portia, plus many of the less famous Team Sussex types who are still in constant contact and trying to help them with ideas and strategy during this testing time. They know how to make it in a cutthroat industry and they're reassuring Harry and Meghan that you have to make waves to reach the top. It feels like a war zone at times, but they're not giving up. And Meghan is excited to be coming out all guns blazing again in her own polished and thought out way. So that was uh, written by someone called Lauren Hill Roger. And there you have it. You know, a lot of things have fallen flat for the runaway duo Sussexes. And essentially, it's not looking very good. And what do they do? They've pretty much thrown everything but the kitchen sink at trying to sink the royal firm and trying to make themselves, quote unquote, popular, relevant, current, rebranded modern royals. And it hasn't worked. People are still gagging for and can't get enough of the original thing, William and Kate, who are doing absolutely fabulous. They've done everything to make it easy for William and Kate to ascend to the throne in style and modern fashion. This is one of the most enticing things to watch in the history of the monarchy. And I think that everything that Harry and Meghan have done thus far has only but served to make William and Kate look like they are the true golden couple. And I, mean, I, I don't see how they're going to get themselves out of this hole. I think the more they do, the worse it gets. And that's where I'm going to leave it. So with all that being said, guys, I'll be back with another video. Take care, guys. Bye.